I think the AI machine learning is really, really exciting. You know, learning about our, our customers' needs and wants on a very, very personal level and adapting the way that we interact with those individuals at a personal level to feel that their engagement with our brand is one-to-one. -one. I think that's hugely exciting. Being able to understand what, what, what data is telling us about those customers to enrich that experience even further, I think is, is hugely significant as well. Um, our customers like technology, that's generally what, 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 we, what we see. So when new technology arrives on the scene, you know, different human-computer interactions, you know, I'd like to think that we can leverage these new technologies to, uh, to innovate and bring our brand to those products and to those capabilities in good time so the customer continues to interact with us as technology around us, us innovates and, and, and develops, so can we. That's what I, I see going forward. It's all about the customer experience, what do customers tell us? They like our brand, they like our product. They're always interested in what we're doing next. We recognise as a technology innovator with pizza at the heart of everything we do. We have a, a loyal following. Um, and we want to give things back to the customer as well in terms of understanding more about what they want from us in terms of how they engage with the brand. So we have a, 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 a very well received mobile app, we have an innovative new website, we use those to interact with our businesses in different ways. We have a hugely strong digital marketing capability that augments that and allows us to work with the customers and keep them involved and engaged in our brand. We were one of the first organisations to look at things like conversational commerce, our relationship with uh, the Amazon Alexa, um, integration with social media platforms. These are the things that our customers want and crave, and it's what keeps them coming back to us, is our, our ability to try new things and innovate with technology to keep the customers engaged. In terms of looking at big data, we are learning more about our customers than ever before, and we give that back in terms of products and services that the customers want, uh, you know, want to try next uh, and we work with the customers to enhance those experiences and enhance those products as we go. So we're using those technologies to the benefit of the customers. From a security perspective we're using those, those technologies to protect our customers even more. We adopt asset active and passive security countermeasures to ensure that the customer is protected every time they do business with us. From the franchise to the store operations to electronic commerce and, and everything in between. And that's really, really important. I want customers to trade with Domino's and feel that they're safe, that they're respected, held in high regard, uh, and that we're having a two-way conversation with the customers. You know, that's what drives good value to the customer and that's what drives our business forward. I, I think that um, we're all starting to recognise that security has to be as agile as, as business. Um, a moniker that I hear quite a lot, uh, certainly in the last couple of years, is this idea of security at the speed of business. Now, I think that's absolutely true. In order for that to work, business has got to recognise security as a value creator and a business enabling function. The only way that works is for us to become as adaptive and as agile as the business that we're working in. The reality of the situation is this. This is a highly competitive sector, QSR, quick service restaurant, but business in, in totality is becoming highly competitive, highly agile. The speed and manoeuvrability are really, really important to an organisation. Security cannot be something that slows that process down and if you do, you'll, you'll fail in your role and your remit um, and you'll allow the business to maybe take decisions that they probably shouldn't take. So it, it's, it's something that I don't think is a left of field unusual opinion now. I think we're all catching up. Sectors are all moving at slightly different speeds. So a highly regulated sector is m maybe finding it more difficult to adapt whereas a business is a little bit more agile um, and more digital in its nature, maybe finding it a little bit easier. But I think we're all coming to the conclusion that security and agility go hand in hand with good business. The other thing that's really important is the, is the requirement to shift left. So the, the business spinning up a prototype and then coming to you going, ta-da, by the way, we're going live with this tomorrow. That's very difficult when I have to say, yeah, but that's unlawful and now we can't do that because you're absolutely blocking. And that's what they'll remember you by, the fact that you stopped something great from happening. If you can encourage that culture and that conversation very, very left at feasibility level, we're thinking about doing this. It's actually about the options that are available to balance risk with reward, rather than getting to the end of that, ostracising you from the conversation and then saying, this is what we are going to do. That then makes my job very, very difficult. So I recognise that I have to roll with the business and, and, and work at the same pace that they want to work at. I'm a technologist at heart, so I'm hugely excited by things that are happening. Uh, and in the last couple of years, I, I've worked with um, you know, organisations and consortiums that are looking to exploit that technology and I can see its potential from blockchain to machine learning to AI to big data, data science. 
The other thing is that I, I think we have to be really, really mindful not to be complacent about innovation and new technology. If I look at it in the, in the world of security in the round, there'll always be a need for the human, the human uh, you know, element. But if you look at technologies like AI, machine learning and blockchain, what I'm hoping they will do in the future for my domain and my discipline is they will allow us to release some of that human capital to outreach and outlook. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting quite tired as a, as a CISO to be constantly chasing the shadows of, of, of innovation in the security space in terms of bad practice. You know, I want to be able to get out in front of those things. So I think in the short term, those technologies help us stabilise um, and, and deal with the more mundane tasks whilst allowing us to move further forward. In the context of business, those technologies you know, are geared up to allow us to enrich customer experience, drive efficiencies in our business processes, and the opportunities are endless, and I, I embrace that. You know, back to my, my previous comments that you know, security has to be agile and work at the speed of business. I, I think that we have to recognise that um, these things are moving and very, very new and very, very fast paced, that uh, we will get things wrong sometimes. And there needs to be that understanding that in certain situations, adaptation of new technology like that will need, also need to fail fast and business needs to recognise that as well. So there is a balance to be had between the two.